President Trump sort of stunned the press by saying he would try yet again to abolish Obamacare and make the GOP the party of health care. The press blew the whistle saying he has no plan. And days later, Trump said the vote wouldn't come until after the 2020 election. No, I wanted to delay it myself. I want to put it after the election because we don't have the House. President also made headlines with his shifting rhetoric on the Mexican border. They'll close it and we'll, we'll keep it closed for a long time. I'm not playing games. Mexico has to stop it. We're going to give them a one year warning. And if the drugs don't stop or largely stop, we're going to put tariffs on Mexico and products, in particular cars. And if that doesn't stop the drugs, we close the border. Joining us now, David Martosco, White House correspondent for DailyMail.com. So on the border, Trump makes the threat. Uh, then he says maybe a one-year delay. It's not clear. When the, and then he insists he didn't change his mind. So when the Washington Post says the president is leaving D.C. reeling with policy reversals, does the paper have a point? Well, two things going on here. First of all, I think you have to understand that what happened in the interim is Trump announces, oh, the Mexicans are starting to police their southern border. Oh, you know, hallelujah. These things don't happen overnight. I think it's reasonable to assume that the president knew this, this change from the Mexicans was coming. So he sets it up and says, we're going to close the border. He could look tough. He knows the Mexicans are, have already started policing the border. Now he can say, well, you know. Oh, so now, set himself up to take credit yourself. Exactly. And yeah. not only that, but now he creates a political situation where he can say something draconian, close the border. And he drags a bunch of liberals running for president out to say equally contentious things. I mean, look what happened after he said that. Kamala Harris says DACA kids and illegal immigrants should be working in Congress. Uh, Gavin Newsom talks about creating a, a sanctuary state. And Better or Work says that illegal immigrants jumping the border is good for the safety of El Paso. Now he's got something to run against. Let's look at the press performance on Obamacare, because the president came out and he joined this, his administration sure. supporting this suit to get rid of Obamacare without a replacement. The press was right. Mitch McConnell and Republicans, privately and publicly, said, don't do this. Don't, yeah. don't saddle us with this. And then he says, well, I never planned to do it before. For the election because the Democrats control the House. Well, the Democrats have controlled the House for several months now. Look, I think it's a reasonable thing. If you wanted to interpret this in the kindest light possible, it's reasonable to say, of course, Trump never knew that anything was going to pass. That he's saying that, look, the Democrats seized health care as a powerful issue in 2018. We're going to seize it in 2020. Does he have the political acumen always to say it as concisely as that? No. So, therefore, is it fair? First of all, I think the media have never fully accepted Trump's disruptive style, which is throw out a lot of things, make threats. Right. Um, sometimes it works. Sometimes it backfires and he has to retreat. Wouldn't but it, be it certainly would be fair for the press to say, hey, you're saying the GOP is going to own health care, but where is the plan and when's the vote going to be? Well, the vote is obviously not till after the next election. And presenting a plan, if he's smart, will come around the time of the next political convention. You want to have something fresh to run on. But I think the broader point here, to the point of why you do your show, wouldn't it be interesting and refreshing if every newsroom in Washington had a few people, or maybe half the people, whose nature was to think the way the president thinks and present counterarguments for some of these things and say, maybe we should present this in addition to that? I think that's a good idea. Now, some of the president's statements recently, I don't know why he said wind turbines cause cancer. There's no evidence of that. But leaving that aside, uh, he got dinged by the press for pronouncing origin as oranges sure. and also saying his father was born in Germany, not just of German heritage. Uh, is this nitpicking or fair reporting? Well, I certainly think it's nitpicking to talk about where his father was born, although I can't explain why he talked about that. I do think it would be interesting if media would research a little bit what might he have meant by wind turbines cause cancer. It turns out there's a whole movement in Australia to target wind turbines by saying there's something called wind turbine syndrome and that it includes cancer. And people talk about it. Do I think it's true? No. But he might have heard about it that way. The yeah. oranges thing, this is kind of funny. If you think about it, I just think it's hilarious. In January, he was talking about, you can call a wall peaches. He called Tim Cook, Tim Apple. Now he's doing oranges. If he says, make America grape again, we have the Trump fruit salad. A very fruity explanation. David Bartosco, <laughs> thanks very much.